It's cool. Yeah. And right camera. That would help, wouldn't it? There we go. Fantastic. How are you all this week? Fantastic. I'm hoping. So here we are back in the uh, Mo2 Record studio. My name's James Hookley, also known as Pixel Freak. Um, and if you want to get hold of the parts of tonight's track, what we're going to be doing tonight is doing a track in an hour. So if you want to get hold of the parts uh, for this track, you need to get over to mo2records.com and start for the main list. It's scrolling across the bottom here, as you uh, as you can see here, bottom of the screen. Yeah, with motorrecords.com and sign up for the main list and I'll email out all the parts of the track I create tonight. I don't know what I'm going to be doing tonight. I have no idea um, how the track's going to sound. Uh, we're going to create the whole thing from scratch, do it in four sections. We're going to do a bass and drum section, or drums and groove sections, as I call it. We're going to do like a melody and top line section. Then we're going to do an arrangement section and we're going to do a mix down section. So each one of those sections is going to be 15 minutes long. I'm just going to get my timer here so that we can uh, actually get cracking on here and get this up and running okay so 15 minutes and i'm going to flip the camera over i've got a new camera look this week because we're having so much trouble with the cameras and bandwidth and internet stuff and bits and pieces so i'm going to flick over to the new camera which looks like this so now you'll be able to see everything i do from this way here you can see more of the studio uh, you can see all my keys over here, you can see all the computer stuff over here, you can see um, the screen up in the top corner, just up there, if we can get that right, it's just up there is my main screen. If I'm doing any big work on the screen, we're about, I'll show you the actual whole screen as well. Anyway, so let's get cracking making the tune. Here we go, I'm going to press start now on the timer and we are go for the first 15 minutes. So got a, a kit up on here, just an 808 kit, so just go ahead and make a, start making a beat on there, so put the, the MPC into record, okay so everything I'll do is all, always written inside the MPC, got the MPC Renaissance here running MPC software on the computer more percussion and stuff in here okay so I'm going to go and bring up the uh, view so you can see the LCD window so if you can actually make it out on your screen there you can actually see what I'm seeing on the LCD on the actual thing here. I'm only looking at this. I don't generally look at the screen all that often. Um, but it gives you an idea what I can see in the window on the screen there. So we can put some hi-hats in there. So you can see when I'm holding down my note repeat button, it's giving me the different options at the bottom. Let's do that now. Okay. Get off hat. Okay, maybe a little clap. A bit too much, maybe. Okay, maybe a little bit of um, rim shot as well. Now, what I do is I build up the whole pattern here uh, so that um, we've got all the parts in. Then when we come to arrange it, I can just separate the tracks out. I'll bounce all the individual files out as individual sounds. And that's how we're going to be able to arrange it and mix it down. Um, so, let's uh, put that rim shot in there. OK, 
okay i'm just going to go into program mix mode and i'm just going to mix the sounds a bit better here because they're all a bit all over the place at the moment the pattern i've just written so start with the kick drum so you can see in the npc i can actually use the q-link controls here uh, are automatically mapped when i press the different buttons on here they're mapped to plugins And each one is linked to the volume at the moment of the pads. A bit more of an idea of what I'm playing to. Okay, let's save that. Um, and now we're going to have a got a bass line here. In tune it. Quite warm enough yet that one. Maybe we'll try it. No, it's not quite warmed up enough that maybe we'll get that going in a minute. Let's do it on the DX there. DX21 with the solid bass sound. See on that a bit there. So we'll play about here. Down a little bit here, it's a bit quiet on this one. A bit of a mix up on here. This is my MX1 desk that's feeding in all the audio from all the different keyboards and uh, different bits and pieces into here. I've got the MPC playing as an actual instrument, so it's actual using its outputs, playing them into the mixer so I can actually bring them up and down as if it was a separate instrument not being used by the computer. Really. Um, then I've got all the keys here bringing them into the mixer. Okay, so I need to double that up, so I'm going to play both of those. So I'm just going to go up into Sequence Edit on uh, on the MPC here. I'm just going to lengthen that, not Sample Edit, Sequence Edit. Uh, I'm going to copy the sequence. Just do one copy and press Merge, and it now creates me uh, a four-bar pattern with all the beats and everything. Copy it over the top. So we're going to go in track two. I'm going to make a new program and we're going to make it a MIDI program and I'm going to just go and find out from my preferences here which MIDI outputs to which MIDI input. So we're going to put one to be the DX21 like that there. You can see that. So I've got four MIDI outputs that are, are available to the MPC, and they can be any of the MIDI uh, connections, which I've also got an 8x8 interface over here. The Motu MIDI Express XT is just over there. Now I'm just going to pull the pedal down there. Now I've got my master keyboard, my D5 Roland keyboard here, which is playing into the MPC. So now I can record that as, a, as, a, as an actual part. So let's do that now. No 
no, that's wrong. Let's undo that. Try it again. Okay. Now, I want to be able to play that all the way, everything from inside the MPC, so I don't want any external MIDI parts or anything like that going on. So what I'm going to do now is to sample it into the MPC. So I'm going to go into uh, Sample Record. You see now, when I turn up the input, it's going to give me the sound of the DX. 21 into the actual inputs on on the computer on in the MPC software. So um, what I'm actually going to do is to just press record and when I press play, I'm going to let the sequence in the MPC trigger the the DX and uh, we will see uh, you'll see it record it. We're going to record it in. So I'm going to press record to record to start sampling and then press play on the sequencer just like this and then that allows me to do that and you can see on the screen there now I've got my sample there give it a name we're going to call it DX Bass now the reason why I do this is because I want everything to be playing from inside of here so that uh, there's no external MIDI stuff that allows you to be able to bounce everything um, and affect everything inside the MPC before I do any mixing or anything inside uh, Pro Tools, uh, which is what we're going to be mixing in tonight. If you we saw the video I've put up on. Uh, YouTube, me doing the next next month's track. I had a track out yesterday up on iTunes, videos on the YouTube channel. Now, a track called Gauntlet. Um, on next month's tracks, a track called Casio, and that's. Um, I've got a like a mix down video on that that I mixed in, inside Logic. Uh, that's up on the channel as well. So, now I'm going to just discard the ends here. I don't want these grey bits here on the end, so I'm just going to get rid of those like that now. I'm going to press the pad. So now we've got that. Now I'm going to just come back out to main. I'm going to mute this track with the MIDI on it. I don't want to play that anymore. Try another new program. This time I'm going to make it a drum program, so I'm just trigger things off of pads. We're going to call it uh, DX. Let's call it DX Bass. And then I'm going to grab my DX bass sample and the window over here and drag it to a pad. And now it triggers off that pad. And I'm going to just go program edit and just make that so that it's uh, I can re trigger it by holding the loads on to play it like that. So that's just the way I like to have it. So now we've got this track four. Um, which has got the X bass on there. We're going to go on track three. And give it a drum. The X bass. Okay, so now we're going to record this. So, so the track two, which has got the MIDI on it, is muted. Track three is going to have the bass I'm playing on it from the sample. So we're going to go now. play that in time properly and there it is so play it back now and now it's playing from inside then and that means I can actually flick on the MPC 3000 MPC 60 you can hear immediately it starts to sound pretty amazing
PC60 to sound pretty good to me tonight, so let's leave it on that. Do a quick save. Now we'll leave the MIDI in there, that's not going to matter. I'm not going to play that MIDI again, so but we'll leave it in there anyway. How are we doing on time? Come on for iPhone. One minute, 24 left, okay. So, let's just um, go back down to the, uh, the drum track. I'm going to program edit again. Program mix, sorry. We're going to program mix. And what I'm going to do now is just on the... On here, I'm just going to insert A7. as a little plugin I'm going to insert on here. Which is an auto panner. Good pan sync. In here now, it's it's actually syncing across the speakers. So move that to sixteenth notes. And see how that sounds on there now. Yeah, dotted sixteenths is good. Off, on. Get a bit more space around there. Let's see how we're getting on now. Four seconds, brilliant, perfect. So that's now done. There's the timer right there. So we're going to start another fifteen minutes now, and we're going to do the top, uh, top lines and melody section. Let's start that now. Okay, so we're still on. We're still on. Fantastic, brilliant. I have to check because uh, a couple of weeks ago it kept dropping out. So we got our bass line, and uh, now we're just going to play around and just come up with a, like a top, a top part, uh, kind of some chords or top lines or something on there that we can come up with. Um, let's play it now. Plug in on here. Uh, let's go just create this new 
program here and we'll create a plugin program. Uh, okay, let's do that. And then we'll choose a plugin. Let's choose something. Just save it quickly before we go in to put a plugin in. You never know, it could cause all sorts of havoc. Um, let's put in a uh, UBI workstation in. Um, this is uh, the this, this, uh, this, uh, this sampler um, plugin, UBI plugin. I use sometimes use a Mac 3, which is like its big brother, but they have not dated that for months, years probably, and uh, doesn't load some of the sounds properly at the moment. So I'm using this Freeview version instead at the moment. I've bought quite a lot of the uh, sounds on it and flick it to the screen quickly so you can see it a bit clearer. You on there, okay. So, um, here's all my sounds on here. I'm going to go for uh, Digital Sensations Pack, which has got like M1, SY77, a D50, and an ESX um, on here. Now, on, the reason I'm going for this is because in the key section, it's got the power piano, which is that classic. classic M1 um, piano sound. So if I do that, let's play that on here, make sure that works. Okay, let's pop that in. Uh, let's go record. Okay, save that quickly. Up the track. Another new program. Stop it for a moment. It's just a new program. Another plugin. And we're going to go for. Uh, let's have a look at what we've got here. Um, what else would sound pretty good on top of this? Um. So what we we'll do, let's go for, no, I know what we'll do, let's put another, um, another UVI workstation in, and we're going to load a different sample pack in this one. Um, we're going to load in the emulation to, where is the emulation to? Emulation 2. Now this is the, uh, the emulator, um, the old classic emulator. Now there's this thing in here called Pet Shop Strings, which is a really nice... You immediately hear that's like Pet Shop Boys sounds amazing. So uh, we're going to just see how that sounds in here. And maybe not use that sound but we'll see what it sounds like with this I'll record the part in and then we'll see what it sounds like okay that's not that's not working at all so let's just do So it's going uh, B, F, G major. Okay, so we're going D, F, yeah, 
F. Him on it, was there somewhere? time let's have a look four minutes brilliant okay so let's just have a flick through some of the different string sounds it's quite a thick string sound that one so let's see if we can get something that's a little bit thinner and uh, of course you've been seeing the screen there for all this time so uh, you better see what keys I'm playing because uh, it's, it's flashing up in blue on the bottom of the screen here um, let's just see what the strings we've got on here and just see what they sound like um, Ah, good. It's now just completely done. It's usual little trick of um, losing the audio from the output. We flick that back in there. There we go. Try a different bank really, really quickly. We've got a couple of minutes left. Let's just go back up to Digital Sensations and see what we've got in the pads here. Any any stringy type pad, 90s pad, or that sound like? Absolutely not. Okay, let's not even bother playing it on that one. Uh, what's our 
and that on there. No, SY77. Magic string, let's try that one. Spend too long looking for stuff on here. Just to see if we've got anything in the string machine. Just because 90 stuff tends to be a lot of digital synths, this is what I'm trying to do on here. Special strings, let's try. SX has got quite a lot of stuff in there. No. 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 Okay, so that's our top parts, melodic parts done there. Not too bad. I was going to add a little uh, arpeggiator section. Maybe we'll see if we can get that squeezed in a bit later on. So now we're going to go to the uh, arrangement section, which first of all starts uh, by bouncing everything out. So we're going to go back down, save the project again. We're going back down to track one. We can see all the drums here. And I'll leave you on the screen there so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, so there's a little trick you can use in the MPC where you can explode the tracks into separate uh, into separate actual actual physical tracks. Instead of having all the drums in one track, you actually uh, separate them all on separate sounds. Now the way you do that is you go down, you highlight the track on there, and you just press explode. And now you can see it's muted that track. And if we go up past the sounds, we've got a snare drum track. We've got a kick, a hi hat. All the different sounds are all now triggered on their own tracks, which is great. That's what we want. So we're going to save that again now, and then I'm going to go up to preferences, and we're going to go. Uh, no, we're not going to go to preferences. What we're we going to preferences for? Come on, James. Think, think, think. We're going to go to file export. We're going to go as audio mix down, and then we're going to tick the. Ex Explode tracks. Excuse me, why I have 24 bit 48 kilohertz? Now, these are the tracks you're going to get when you sign up, uh, or if you're already a member of the mailing list, these are the tracks you're going to get. I'm just going to give it four seconds tail at the end there. Um, these are the bits you're going to get for the track here. Uh, I'm going to just do a new folder in here, and we're going to call this parts, and it's 120 BPM. Uh, this is the folder you'll get, this actual parts folder. Things might have been renamed. I usually rename them. Um, for when I send them out, I'll rename them and tag them and everything properly so they're all a lot easier to understand. There we go. It's flicking through each one of the tracks. Perfect. So now I'm going to quit MPC. I'm going to start Pro Tools. So uh, so then now this next section is going to be basically laying out the tracks. I'm going to import the tracks into Pro Tools, quite a new session. Import the tracks, uh, and then we'll just lay them out and create a track uh, a few minutes long. Trying to get four or five minutes long. Uh, pretty much the the, the, the final, uh, final final arrangement, uh, and then the next fifteen minutes will be mixed down. So uh, I'll put you back on the screen. Uh, don't forget 
subscribe to the channel go to it on YouTube click that button now uh, if not uh, pop over to the channel tomorrow you can see the track that came out this week uh, as I say it's uh, it's a track called Gauntlet video is up on the channel now um, I'm gonna just go to where are we episode 4 and call this one H O H for PT mix for Pro Tools mix and it creates me a Pro Tools session so yes you can see the new track uh, you can get the new track um, and listen to everything that we've done you can see the video I made for the next track coming out you can see uh, there's a few bits and pieces I've done using the Commodore 64 last week just using a bit of software on that all those sorts of bits and pieces okay so now we're in my my basic uh, template here which gives me a kick trigger which is just for, uh, used for a side chain uh, I'm going to import tracks shift command Ooh. copy error message okay interesting all right we're not going to do import tracks from that then because it's not letting me do it it's coming up with some weird error okay we do it a different way we're going to go into the folder on the hard drive and we're just going to drag them in instead um i've got time to figure out why it's not doing that properly now uh here we go in here in pixel freak and in where is he where is he where is he let's do that modified there he is, one hour house four parts one twenty BPM and drag him in. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to worry about that another time. Why they don't all come in there. Let's just highlight those. That I haven't got time to worry about that now. Okay, perfect. So it's already set at one twenty BPM. Oh, lovely. We've got no audio coming out either. Perfect. That's what you need when you've got... Why have we got no audio coming out then? A1 and 2... No, nope, nothing coming out. Brilliant. Okay, so what we're going to do then? We're going to quit. We're going to not do it in here. We're going to go and do it in Logic instead. Uh, I've got time to mess about with it. Figure out why Pro Tools is deciding not to read my audio interface right now. Um, so let's load Logic up, and we'll just do a mix down this week in Logic instead. Fantastic. Okay, so let's do my templates. We'll do a 48 kilohertz uh, empty session template with a trigger kick trigger again this has also got a monotribe sync so it can synchronize my uh, send a sync pulse to the monotribe synthesizer if I need to that's what that is there we don't need to have the MPC in there so I'm just going to delete that track and in fact we need any of these instruments here so I'm just going to delete all those as well and now we're going to go into the bin and we're going to add audio files in here and we're going to go into that folder there and drag all of these add all those and do done and then we're going to do a save as and I'm just going to pop it on the desktop for a moment because I can't I've got time to fiddle about doing all this here one H O H episode 4 come on computer keep up right Steps four, great. Okay, uh, we'll make it a fold. Yes, we're going to copy all that stuff in there. I'm going to call it one h o h f four. Perfect. Okay, so it's creating all these over here for me, and um, we're just going to grab them all. Let's just shrink them all down with the Alt key. I'm going to grab them all like this. And drag them all into the main window here. Uh, create new tracks. There they are. We're at 123. I'm going to take it down to 120.
Perfect. Okay, so. Let's just work out. Okay, so that's rim shot. Work out what all these are. Clap. Doing this really fast now. Kick. Uh, that's hats. Hats. This is snare. This one is looks like strings. Uh, this one is piano, and this one is bass. Okay, so these two are nothing. So we can get rid of that and get rid of that track. That top one didn't bring in. Okay, so let's un solo all of those. And we are going to use Marquee Tool. God bless them. They've changed all the keyboard commands that I used to know for Logic. All the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Escape, and then Choose It All. It's all been changed with the latest version, and now it's all letters on the keyboard rather than numbers, which is a little bit annoying. But uh, you get to know them, I guess. So, Kick, Snare. Hats. Let's put claps there first, and then rim shot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open the mixer with the X key. We're going to highlight all of those tracks there. I'm going to do Alt C, get the color window up, make them all red. Base can stay blue, but it's going to go a different color blue. It's going to go a brighter blue. Like that. Piano and strings. Piano can be green. Strings can be yellow. I'm going to output master. Brilliant. Okay, we're going to just add in. Um, we're going to choose all of these and we're going to set these to go to a bus. Very quickly, let's make it bus 32. It gives me another bus here, which I'm then going to create a track for. I call that drums. So drums now play through one bus. Okay, so now we've got that our basic setting on there. I'm just going to go into here. We're going to zoom out, and we're going to start. Let's taking. Uh, start from bar 17 and we're going to start just building the track from over here. I'm going to click off. Okay, let's bring the bass line in there. Let's have that in from the start. I'm going to bring the rim shot in. Of course, don't forget this isn't going to sound like this, and we've got the mixing sections next, so we're just doing an arrangement of what, what's going to happen where at the moment.
have that coming up like that. And then have just that and that to pick up the bars. stretch it. Let's bring those strings back in there to fade up. because Pro Tools didn't work I'm just going to run just a couple of minutes extra just to get that back bring the end point just across here a bit more too bad for a, for a very quick arrangement it's got two drops all right so let's do mix down section okay so let's just uh, so we know what everything is here I'm gonna color the regions by track so we know what they all are now so uh, let's go in now and then we're going to start mixing. So I'm going to bring up the mixing desk and we're going to grab everything like this and just put it down. So we've now got nothing on there. And I'm going to go in to uh, 
um, into my this is my my basically my, my master channel setting. So I've now got a uh, a uh, in Logic I have a, a bus compressor SSL bus compressor and a, a, a Logic ad limiter that I put on the outputs for just for a bit of mastering. Um, and let's just go ahead now and just start mixing the track. So let's move it to a section where we know everything's playing. Let's go over here. Actually, go over there like that. So I'm going to bring the drums up. Now, anybody who's seen me do mixing in um, Pro Tools, I use the same, pretty much the same plugins, no matter what I'm in. So I'm going to use the SSL channel strip here. Uh, it's just because it's my it's my favourite sounding plugin. That's all. Um, I used to use all we use Logic all the time when we did the chicane stuff, that kind of thing. A lot of it was just the the, the built-in plugins. Uh, I've got this now, and I love it. So I use this quite a lot in all programs, pretty much. So you can add a bit of compression, a bit of EQ, a bit of compression, off, on. Brilliant. Drop the volume down a bit there. We're overloading a little bit there. Okay. So again, we're going to pop a reverb on. This is going to be the Native Instruments uh, RC24 on mix setting, and there's a little, there's a small snare room setting I always like using for snare drums. So we're going to have that on there and then we're going to put in a SSL channel. With the A2H now I'd like to give it a bit more middle on it. Top to give it a bit of punch. Yeah, so I'm putting the reverbs in first before I EQ and compress it so that you get the compression, um, compresses the reverb on top of the snare as well. And for this one, because it's already got a bit of reverb on it, I'm just going to put on an SSL channel. And just give it a bit more high end so it cuts through a bit more. And a bit of compression. That so really snaps. Just pan the hats around a bit. Now, I always like the uh, hats to sound. Quite toppy. I'm just going to use a logic logic plugin on that. I think. So show I'm not scared to use logic plugins. Take all the low end out. Make it nice and snappy and sharp. Put a logic compressor on there as well. Really feed down there. That's it. I'm going to go back to. Actually, I'm going to pop a, a native instruments replica on here. Do a bit of echo behind there. And then we're going to just stick an SSL channel strip on the rim shot as well. Give it a little bit of top to make it bang. Pop through a bit. A bit too much compression on there. That's better. So it just tickles it. 
Okay, so now on the drums, I'm going to put on the SSL drum strip. Which is this little baby here. Now this really has got some punch. I'm going to bring the input down a bit there so it doesn't absolutely overload everything. Keep an eye on the output of the channel here. Give a bit of smack from the trans transient shaper. Not a lot because it tends to take quite a lot of stuff on there. Give it a little bit of Uh, on the top end and the magic bass drum enhancer there he is right there off on and a bit of this mic compressor just sort of get a little bit too much and then bring the dry wet mix down there we go, we listen to that. Alright. Now. Now what we haven't done is to copy over I'm going to mix it down for a second. So it's to copy over the, the kick drum trigger. So I'm just gonna basically just loop that all the way across for the moment. I want to put this on the base. So I'm going to use the start of the solo the bass line. Uh, pop on the SSL channel. Hear yeah, that lovely noise from that DX. It's got a real hiss to it, a real noise to it. It gives it a real character. It's great. Don't get that on plug. wanted it on plugins. I think it sounds great anyway. Um, now what I'm going to do now I've got that on there. I am going to just pop in Logic and I've got my setting called Basic Pump. Which if people are interested in I can put that up this this setting up here not a problem at all. Uh, I can put that up online. Um, if you join up for the main list I can get that sent out to you not a problem at all. Um, now I need to just tell the side chain to feed from bus 13, which is where this kick trigger is going. And that means when I, when I throw this, we get a real pump going on. I can make that as much as little as I want. So when that's playing along with the track, down one and put pop a reverb on it as well so we're going to use that same one we did before RC24 just on the standard I think there maybe not maybe make it a bit bigger Drag, copy that over with the alt key. And take that compression threshold down a bit with the strings. So 
it isn't doing quite so much. And now this one is going to have a delay on it. Let's find it. Where is it? Native Instruments. You put replica on there. And if we use a low cut to take the, the low frequencies out of the delays, it doesn't get quite so much in the way of the actual pattern itself. It can mix it in by keeping the level up nice and loud. Uh, we're going to use an SSL channel now. Give it a real. Plenty of boost on the compression. It's got lots of energy in it. And then we're going to put that pump compressor on it as well. Quite so much pump compression. Got some of that delay down as well on it. these strings to fade up a bit here. So I'm going to put a filter on the strings. Just a standard logic filter will do. automation view here I'm going to choose go in here and choose to do the uh, uh, cut off and I want to bring it up so I'm going to click I want to start so, and then we're going to click over here down again over here it comes up again we think it's the 14 percent again so it's nice now what we're going to do here is we're going to highlight this little fella Oh, do that. Control equals. No. It used to be one of these that used to make it do that. Okay, we're not going to do that then. Convert, convert. Loops to regions. There we go. That means basically everything's, they're all sort of being loops now, they're, they're actual real copies of, of that there. So, that's our time. I'm just going to whip these out of here. Have that come back in, actually probably there. So that's our, that's our arrangement. Um, Yeah, not a bad little track again there, if I do say so myself. Um, whoa, didn't minimise then. Okay, so 
This means you're getting confused between my Pro Tools and my Logic commands. Let me flick you back to the camera. So, thanks ever so much for watching. That's tonight's track. If you want to get the parts for it, um, then get yourself over to motorecords.com and you'll get the sample pack for it. You can also get the sample packs for all the other tracks I've done, uh, all the previous uh, studio hangouts I've done, and the other three um, one hour of house hangouts as well. Um, any questions you got, please post comments on the video below. Subscribe to the channel. Get all your mates to watch everything uh, and get them to subscribe. The more people we get, the more fun we can have. Brilliant. Okay, thanks very much for watching and I will see you all next week. See ya, bye.